quiet street in a quiet neighborhood in the middle of the 20th century. What are you looking for? What do you see? Where people lived in square, fine, ample houses, the ferocious slums. Many still stand, many torn down, rebuilding among the dispersal of people and neighborhoods. A way being made for the projects. Signs of change in all the cities and still the dark red blindness of walls. The cities reach out. The ghettos burst open after a long while. Ghettos of every kind. Old borders into the sunny, branchy section, pushing out to the new country, waiting raw for the builders. Some of us still live in uniformity, but the sifting has begun. And when you look further, when you look for a house, you see the city's reach. What are you looking for? A place to live. Your warmth, your love, your work, your rest from work, your quiet and the sounds you like, your privacy, your friends, a good place for children, a place to grow in, easy to keep clean, a place we can afford, the right place for us. And even from the car, we try to guess. What is there for us? Who lives behind these doors? On this quiet street, who lives here? Could this be it? This one? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Dick on the phone right away. Nice streets in a nice neighborhood where things are taken care of well. Why do people come here? All the regular reasons. <laughs> This room, this is what I mind leaving the most. So many little things. Bob seeing Ginny in her wedding dress here for the first time. That night we got back from the hospital after little Laurie was born. <laughs> Suddenly we were grandparents. Christmases, birthdays. Don't you feel that way about the room? Oh, of course you don't. Sure I do. Well, tonight, when I was burning the leaves, I felt that again. Not just about the room or the house, but the whole neighborhood. Something about the people here. I just, I just hate to pull out. Well, we haven't moved for ages. When you think of the way most people move all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the year Jenny was born? Three places we lived that year. Isn't that awful? <laughs> I'll get it. It's pretty late. Yes? 
Yes, this is Mrs. Candy. There must be some mistake. And it, it was about those people that were here today. You mean because of... I knew it. I knew it the minute they got out of that car. I know somebody was going to throw a fit. But who in God's name would do a thing like that? Oh, you're really very upset, aren't you? But can I get you something? Maybe just a bath. Was it that bad? Worse. What gets into a person like that? Do you know what he said? Hello, Tom. How have you been? Fine, Ed. You? No complaints. By the way, Tom, you going to lodge making Thursday? Always do, don't I? Well, is there anything the matter? I just don't understand you, Ed. You've always been a pretty regular guy. A credit to the neighborhood, too. I'm the same guy I've always been. There's something bothering you. Why don't you just say it? Same thing's bothering a lot of people. I guess we didn't know you as well as we thought. Get to the point, Tom. Come on, Ed, don't pretend you don't understand. Nobody's going to get away with the stuff you're trying to hand out. Now, look here. You look here. Nobody's threatening you. There's never going to be any violence in this part of town. We're peaceful people. You've got friends here. I'm your friend. We just want to know what it is you think you're doing to us. Quiet street, quiet neighborhood. Never any trouble here, none at all. So I got off that bus and came straight here. Well, there's nothing to worry about, Ed, nothing at all. Everybody knows you as an ideal citizen, but well, frankly, let me give you a little friendly advice. Take that sign down. Your house is a desirable property. We'll turn up the right buyer for you. I hear what you're saying, Ted, but don't turn on the bedside manner. You struck me as upset. Tom Elder was upset. Tom Elder didn't walk in my door. <laughs> Can't blame Tom, Ed. People get nervous, you know. They worry. I told them it's probably all a mistake. We all know you wouldn't do anything out of line, Ed. Out of line? What in heaven's name are you talking about? Some people came to look at my house. They were Negroes. I haven't done anything, yet. Well, now, take it easy, Ed. I'm not Tom Elder, you know. Look, let's face it. If you want to sell your house, I want to sell it for you. That's what I'm here for. That's my business. But there's some things you just can't do. That sign. It's a terrible thing. It's sort of an open invitation to anybody. You've been around here long enough to know we don't do things. That way? Now, listen. I've had a dozen people in here would have taken your place. I didn't let them get as far as you. I've got to consider the community. You're leaving, but there are a lot of us who are going to be here for a long time. Now, take a tip from an old friend. Forget this whole thing and let me take care of your house. Out of line. Well, that's Ted Motes for you. Well, you either see things his way or you're out of line. Well, the minute those people showed up, I, I knew there was going to be some talk. But what was I supposed to do, slam the door in her face? Where's Laurie? She was here a minute ago. Oh, she's outside playing with Bobby. He's got a new bike and he promised to give her a ride. Oh, Bob, hmm. how about some fishing this Saturday? Weather's still good. Laurie can come along with no, us. No, nothing doing, Dad. Bob promised to put up the wallpaper in the dinette weeks ago, but he can find the darndest excuses for not doing it. This Saturday, that wallpaper goes up. Oh, who's the boss around here anyway? Ginny, I'll help you with the wallpaper. We can get it done in a few hours with these two out of the way. <laughs> well... same again. At the first sign of the first family entering, the street responds with the old questions. Why do they go where they're not wanted? 
Why in a neighborhood like this? Now the old cries, running the place down and values down, wanting our girls. Now images rise up, riots at night, murder, rape, images of violation, fears that lie deep in people's lives. And a man stands suddenly alone. 